Hello again, everybody. I hope you enjoyed your Christmas and got everything that you wanted on this bright and shiny new year. It's your favorite dude, clammy noob, jammy dude, yammy noob. So the time has come and now you're finally gonna get a motorcycle. Sweet baby back ribs, this is good news. But wait, just like any other hobby, you should probably prepare for your new toy's arrival and have these seven things before you pick up your bike. This is assuming it's a used bike and not a brand spanking new one from the dealership because you watch my videos, you're a savvy consumer, you get it, you get a good pat on your good boy head, but some items will still apply, so enjoy. Number one, cleaners and polish. Once you get your sweet new ride, the first thing on your mind after riding the crap out of it, of course, is going to be making it look good and shiny. It's your pride and joy. Even if it's a clapped out Honda dirt bike from the early 90s, you gotta take care of it. She might be abused more than a Hertz rental Mustang, but now she's all yours. Take some pride in her and clean her up, my dudes. The best thing to do is have everything necessary to properly clean the bike and all of its components. Remember, all bikes aren't made with the same materials. Some are going to have chrome and need chrome polish. Other will have magnesium wheels, plastic, fiberglass, carbon fiber, all kinds of stuff. And almost every bike's gonna have some type of leather or synthetic seat that may require a special cleaner. Get the best products you can and just go all out. Seriously, get that thing so shiny that the mirrors will attract search and rescue planes. Polish it so thoroughly that the paint will hypnotize your lusty neighbor. The biggest benefit to having a clean bike is seeing where you need maintenance. A used bike with a higher mileage may have grime and grease built up around engine cases, seals, or gaskets. After Cleaning the bike, you should be able to pinpoint where any leaks are coming from and start working on a way to replace those worn out gaskets or seals. And if you think being that anal retentive about cleaning your bike is just me talking, well look no further than MotoGP, where they literally spick and span clean every single bike from tip to toe right before every race. Seriously, go check it out. There's probably a video of it somewhere. I don't know. Clean your bike and then give it a solid once over. Look for anything out of place, missing, worn, or in need of attention, then stand back and glow with pride. Number two, it's spools and sliders. Are you the kind of person that buys a new smartphone and immediately buys a case and screen protector? Good. Welcome to motorcycling. When you know which bike you're getting or you're on your way to go pick it up, get some frame sliders and spools in the mail immediately. Your local shop has them for pickup, that's even better. The frame sliders will keep most of the damage away from your fairings and engine components in the event of a tip over or crash and the spools will allow you to lift your bike with a stand. Some spools act as sliders too and it's possible to lay an entire bike on its side and have only the spools and sliders touch the ground. Neato! If you can't get the sliders and spools on the day of your purchase of your bike or before, expedite them and try to minimize any scenario where you might drop your bike or need the extra protection. If this is your first bike, you might want to wait until they arrive and have them installed. Trust me, just like that smartphone, it's all fine and dandy until you break something and realize that $90 on frame sliders would have saved you 600 bucks on fairings, handlebar ends, a clutch lever, and etc. It's well worth the wait and it's something you should really have before you get your bike on the road. Number three, and this is probably the most important one, and Ari Henning will probably tell you just as well, it's the factory service manual. Have you seen a motorcycle forum or a Facebook group where someone asks a question about their bike's symptoms? You'll get over a hundred responses and suggestions as to what is wrong with the bike. Fuel cuts out? Buy a fuel pump. Or it's the kill stand switch. Or a clogged fuel filter. Maybe it's bad gas. The list is endless. The problem here is that everyone online thinks they can diagnose a bike that they've never seen in person. Everyone's an armchair mechanic on the internet, and they can do it better than you and in half the time while drinking two beers. Buy yourself the factory service manual to your bike. It's not an owner's manual, but the most knowledgeable source for you to diagnose, troubleshoot, repair, and maintain your own bike. You need a torque spec, a bolt tightening sequence, is your bike acting funny in cold weather? The manual is going to have all your answers and some commonly diagnosed problems as well. If there's more than one, it's also going to have a step-by-step -step troubleshooting method too. You don't have to listen to what anyone says on the internet because now, Grasshopper, you possess the knowledge to find the problem yourself. The manuals range from free PDFs to around 50 bucks brand new. The choice is yours depending on your Google skills and bank account. The PDF versions are great because they allow for seamless searching and you can screenshot certain pages like torque specs or fluid capacities. If you're old school and need a printed book, I myself like an actual printed manual for something like that. Marketplaces like Amazon and eBay will most likely have your manual available for a lot cheaper than retail. And of course, if you're just a bougie squid like I am sometimes, you can always just take your bike in for repairs. It is what it is. 
Now, did you get what you wanted for Christmas? Did you get what you wanted for Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Festivus? If not, Yammy Noob has a few gifts left to give. It's called the Beginner Bike Giveaway Series, and yours truly, Papa Yams, is giving away three awesome bikes. Got a Ninja 400, a Suzuki DRZ 400, even a CB650R. It's crazy, right? Hop over to yammynoob.co, that's .co, pick a subscription package and get yourself all kinds of cool perks. Hit the links below and get yourself started. If you don't want to do that, go to yammynoobmerch.com grab yourself some sweet merchandise and with all that christmas dough every dollar you spend is an entry to win so don't hold back up next maintenance items since you should have the factory service manuals of the bike by now you need to start going over the maintenance items on your bike at specified intervals and also because you're taking ownership now if the previous owner told you the oil trains was recent or that the air filter or spark plugs were just changed i wouldn't trust them the best thing to do is find out for yourself there are two huge benefits to this one just because the previous owner did the spark plugs doesn't mean that they use oem parts on your bike do you really think a $1.19 spark plug will outperform an $8 one? Don't be cheap either. The same for an oil change, maybe you want to run full synthetic in your bike but the previous owner used some no-name stuff off the shelf, and two, it lets you learn on your bike on a mechanically intimate level. Knowing how your parts work is better than knowing what they do. The clutch disconnects and applies power from the engine to the rear wheel, so do you know if the clutch is out of adjustment? Read up on it and figure it out for yourself. The most important part to look over, clean, and maintain is going to be your chain. Make sure you lube and clean it once you take ownership of your bike, and then do so regularly every three to 500 miles, depending on your type of riding. If you pick it up and it looks cleaned and lubed, it's probably okay to go, but it's advised just to clean and lube it on your own. When you look into the factory service manual, it's going to specify a type of cleaner and lube. It's suggested to go with the factory recommendation, no matter how bad it smells, then to go with an aftermarket miracle spray in a can. However, most regular sprays off the shelf are going to do just fine. Manufacturers like Suzuki state in the factory manual to clean the chain with kerosene and to use a heavyweight gear oil like 75W90 or 85W140. Be careful when using gear oil because it's going to overspray everywhere. Ingrain the mileage interval for your chain cleaning and lubing interval and start to record your own system. Go ahead, embrace your new spreadsheet lifestyle. Next up on our list is missing slash broken parts and return to factory. Would you just look at your bike? Isn't she beautiful? Mmm, all those missing bolts, cracked mirrors, and scuffed levers and handlebar ends, it makes you just swoon. Next on the list is to take inventory on parts that your bike needs to maintain a 100% appearance. If the previous owner chose to ride with duct tape instead of fairing bolts, now's the time to make the bike right and buy them. Cracked mirror or mirror delete? Go buy a pair of used mirrors and throw them on the bike. You probably won't pass in inspection and there's no reason to be riding without mirrors or with cracked ones. New riders should always run a bike as close to stock before dropping mods on it. If your bike has an obnoxious exhaust system or was altered from the factory in some way that you just don't like, now's the time to simply fix and make it right too. Don't run around on a bike with an exhaust that was hacked off. Get something decent, my dude. Don't be like us and put a ridiculous fart can on your SV650 and then have to change it to a Patrician Leo Vince exhaust. I speak from nothing but experience. If you're looking at a bike with too many mods to undo, like a stretch, a wider rear tire, or a huge drop in height, it might just be better to go with another bike, or to see if the owner will include the stock parts if he or she has them. Number six, a rear stand. Ah, the rear stand. If you're thinking about getting into motorcycling, the rear stand is something you should invest in if you purchase a bike. For real. Well, okay, maybe not before you sign up for the basic rider course, but it should be purchased on the same day as your sliders and spools. The rear stand is vital to performing any work on a motorcycle. Cleaning and lubing the chain, it's going to make your life so much easier. Adjusting the chain, it's going to help with that too. Changing brake pads, tires, you get the point. The rear stand is going to pay for itself after the first time you use it, and in conjunction with the spools, you can lift your bike one-handed. It's awesome and well worth it. And in a small way, you'll feel like the Jedi you were meant to become. That new Star Wars movie really sucked. If you live in an area with a winter season, you can raise the rear wheel, if not both with a front stand as well, off the ground so it won't develop flat spots from sitting during storage. Some stands are bike specific, while others are universal and lie to lift a bike with either spools or with paddock or lifting stands for bikes without spools. Remember, as soon as you get your motorcycle, you should have at minimum the rear stand on order because it's going to be a very useful thing to have. And last on our list is don't overlook this one, some basic gear. Before you get your bike, you should obviously get some gear. And I'm not saying you need to get a full tracksuit to go with your R3 that's about to be delivered or you need to spend a couple hundred bucks on Kevlar jeans, which is that word prom. I'm talking about the bare necessities to ride. And remember, if you're buying a bike in one season, you can wake up the next season and be woefully unprepared for it. 
at minimum, you should have a helmet, goggles, or extra face shield, gloves for both hot and cold season, boots, and jacket with some armor. That sounds like it's way too expensive, Papa Yam. I know, I know, and you're not incorrect. The worst feeling you'll have is not being able to ride your bike because of a change in season or suffering because of a drastic temperature change. When you ride out to work in 28 degree weather and strip down to a t-shirt during your 72 degree lunch break, you'll understand why having versatile gear is important. After work, let's say the temperatures drop to 40 degrees and it starts raining, you should have some high-vis gear when you ride too. Well, my dudes, that's going to wrap it up for today. I hope you're not too discouraged before buying your first bike. And it's okay if you don't get every single one of these things before you start to ride. You can honestly just go get a simple helmet and gloves, go pick up your bike, and then start kind of slowly collecting all your stuff too. Papa Yam won't be too upset at you. If you're waiting on a tax refund or for the MSF course to begin, tackling a few of the items on your list can be mucho beneficial, especially researching how to work on it. Got any else that you bought before your bike? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. Fact. Centralia, Pennsylvania is a former coal mining town where a fire reached the mines in 1962. This caused an evacuation and subsequent abandonment of the town. The fire still burns today. Goodbye.